Four years ago, I quit a stable job to become a solo developer. I wanted to learn how to earn an income on my own to pick up the skills to earn my independence. And four years later, I've survived. It has not gone how I expected. There's been some hard times along the way. And in this video, I really wanna set out what I thought were my expectations before I quit my job because I was earning a very decent salary for a U company here in the UK. Why did I quit? What were my expectations going into this journey? And then what was the reality? So that if you're thinking of doing something similar, you're working a job and you want more freedom, more control, more independence, then I'm gonna lay it all out here. I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. I'm gonna give you a lot of the reality that I haven't talked about in previous videos. So strap in for the ride. So about four years ago, I was on the 13 year mark of in terms of how much experience I had in the software development industry. I'd worked for some big companies but I thought it was about time to do something different. 13 years is a long time to do anything and although I, I certainly didn't hate my job there were parts of it that I really enjoyed. I felt like I wanted to learn how to earn an income on my own because by that time I'd realized that there were all these other departments in the company that I couldn't survive without them. I was just building the product, but these other departments were needed to, to find customers, to sell the product, and I kind of wanted to learn how all that worked. So this was my expectation when I quit my job. I thought that I was just gonna quit my job and make a course for software developers, and that would kind of take off. I'd earn some nice monthly revenue, most of it would be passive income, maybe launch a few more courses and just become this kind of developer educator online. That was my plan and the expectation was that I'd do this and then I'd be able be able to earn enough money to travel the world as I liked. I'd have the revenue to, to rent an Airbnb for a month at a time and to travel around, explore new places, and that was the plan. And I didn't go into this completely blind. I'd saved up a decent chunk of money. Let me just switch this around because it's getting heavy here. I saved up a decent chunk of money, six figures, to basically act as a runway for launching me into this new journey. I'd had that squirreled away in the bank account. To be honest, I didn't want to touch too much of it. I wanted to start earning money as quickly as possible so that I didn't have to squander my savings. And yeah, we'll get onto how that worked out later. But when I quit my job, I went straight into building my course mode. I was enthusiastic, I was naive, but I took action built this course out and then launched it and I'm not going to go into many details of my products because I've covered them in other videos but I launched this course for Java developers and it went pretty well it went surprisingly well considering it was the first thing I'd sold online whether that was luck or whether there was any element of skill maybe a bit of both but I thought I was set at that point I thought I'm making a few thousand dollars here by selling this course to developers around the world and I'm getting good feedback. I thought I was set, but it didn't really work out like that. Because one thing I've realized is that this whole thing of coming at, becoming a solo developer is, it's not really a, a practical exercise. Yeah, there are practical steps you need to take, but the thing that prevents you taking those steps is more of, of a mental battle. And I've gone through several of these during the last four years. And the first mental battle was around the fact that I was selling this course, which was for Java developers, and I was no longer a Java developer because I'd quit my job and it didn't really make sense for me to, to write Java code. I was coding, but it wasn't really Java at that time. And that was the first mental battle of realizing that this wasn't sustainable. Teaching a skill that I wasn't practicing myself didn't make any sense. So this was quite an important realization for me. And it was quite a problem as well, because suddenly I went from thinking I was on the way up. I was earning maybe one and a half thousand dollars at the time from this course and also an ebook that I was selling to Java developers. One and a half thousand dollars and slowly that started decreasing as I moved away from that. Problem is I didn't know what the next thing was going to be. So there I was a couple of years after I quit my job and the route I thought I was going to take to becoming independent was kind of blocked and I had to find a different way. Now, by this point, those savings were coming in real handy. And I was actually, I was traveling about, mostly in Europe, so nothing too fancy. And during this time when I wasn't really sure 
what my next step was. I was actually going on these trips and doing these travel vlogs, documentary style videos on another YouTube channel because in the back of my mind I kind of had this crazy idea that I was I would become a travel vlogger as the backup option if the solo dev thing didn't work out. And when I tried that for a bit, I kind of realized that it's overrated. Traveling around, sleeping somewhere different every day, having a tight budget, it's overrated. And when I realized that, I saw that all the experience that I'd accumulated in software development, that was valuable. And during the whole time, I had still been uploading to my software development YouTube channel. And I realized that if I wanted to do the travel vlogging thing, I would really be starting again from scratch. You've got to think about what advantages you already have, whether that's in terms of your natural abilities, what you prefer, what you dislike, what experience you've got, or what things you've already built. You've got to think about what advantages you already have and you've You've got to build on that. And if you do that effectively, that can save you so much time as opposed to starting again from scratch. So to put this in perspective, around that time I was getting into this whole movement around indie hacking. These software developers who were also solo developers, but they were building their own small software products and selling them for a monthly subscription. And this really resonated with me because it was a solution to my problem. I was a ship without any direction. I was just going around in circles and now I had somewhere to steer towards this idea of launching my own software products, which was very exciting to me because I had spent so long building software for big companies, you know? And just being a small cog in the machine and now I had the chance to build something myself and launch it online and say hey I built that thing even if it was just a small little app so I went down that path and to cut a long story short I spent a few months building four different applications SaaS if you want to call them software as a service and at the end of that I earned a little bit of money, but definitely not enough. Only a few hundred dollars. But the cool thing was, this is one of the advantages of sharing stuff online, documenting your journey, is whenever something doesn't work out, like the SaaS thing didn't really work out, so you can turn any failure into a positive by sharing it with others, helping them understand what you would do differently next time so they can avoid the same mistakes. So in summary, by this point, I'd quit my job. I've made some money from the book and the course. I tried building my own software products and it hadn't really worked out. And now I was kind of stuck again. Wasn't sure what to do. But there was one thing that I'd been doing this whole time, probably the only thing that I'd been consistent with, and that was my YouTube channel. I'd been consistently uploading to my channel and even though the direction changed as my solo developer journey changed direction, that'd always been something that I'd enjoyed. And I'll tell you why I enjoy putting videos onto YouTube. And I'm gonna compare this with software development because when you build a software product, especially a large one, it's a long-term project. Whereas when you build a video, it's something that you can create in a day, a few days, publish it, and then that's done. There's no support. There's no call out in the middle of the night. Whether I have a short attention span, I don't know, but I like doing it, getting it done, and then moving on to the next one. When I realized that this was the only thing I'd been consistent with was YouTube, I thought to myself, how could I turn YouTube into the thing that I do while combining that some way with my experience as a software developer? And that takes me to where I am now, which is helping other software developers to grow an audience and a personal brand on YouTube. And that's kind of crazy when I've described my journey like that, that that's where I've ended up. I think that's the cool thing about going out on your own as a solo whatever. What you think your path might be to begin with, it's going to end up being something completely different. Even though I'm earning money now from helping developers in this way, this probably isn't going to be what I'm going to be doing in a couple of years time. I might be doing something completely different. When you're in a career and you're doing development jobs, it feels a bit more like you're following more of a strict path. You've got less options. But when you go solo, you call the shots, which means that if it goes wrong, that's your responsibility as well. But it does mean that you get to try things out, take risks, launch things, just to see whether they work or not. So here I am four years later, and like I said, and like is obvious, <laughs> I have survived. I've eaten through a lot of those savings that I originally started with as my runway. But I'm feeling good as well because 
I've done so many new things that I wouldn't have done before. I've launched all these different products, some which I plan to, some which I never even had any concept of when I left my job. And I'm learning all these skills I feel are going to stick with me for a lifetime. I'm not going to conclude this by saying whether I recommend being a solo developer, whether you should quit your job immediately. <laughs> but the one thing I will say is, will you regret it if you don't try it? If you get to the ripe old age of 70 and you never tried launching your own project outside your job, will you regret it? If yes, then maybe it's something you could consider, even if it's just a side project that you work on after hours. Because ultimately, we all want to have more freedom, more money, more control over where and when we work, all that good stuff. And since becoming a solo developer, I've realized that that's not something that I can expect just to be placed in my lap. It's something that I really have to work on from the ground up. It's not like landing a job and immediately getting a salary. It's my responsibility to build that up for myself. And ultimately I've told myself that this is my path now. I'm not going back to a job. To do that would be to admit defeat. And that's what's really exciting about this. I don't know what's coming next, but I'll be sure to document it on this channel. And I'd also love to hear about what you're planning. What ideas do you have to maybe make a bit of a side income outside your normal job or launch a project that you're excited about. If you want to grow with a group of other ambitious developers, then why not join my free community where you'll get support to build an audience and grow your own personal brand. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one.